Hello, I'm George Henderson and today we're going to be discussing low carbohydrate diets and mortality. Does restricting carbohydrate increase your risk of death based on population cohort study data? Some say it does, but I say not so quick. A new study came out last week in the European Heart Journal. Low car lower carbohydrate diets in all cause and cause specific mortality. Now this used the low carbohydrate diet score invented by Walter Willett in Harvard a few years ago. And this sort of higgledy piggledy score piles protein and fat together, measures them against carbohydrate, doesn't include other macronutrients importantly. And we can see here that the carbohydrate dose response isn't there. Quartile three has the lowest carbohydrate score. And, you know, so it's not really accurately measuring what it's meant to measure. And another interesting thing is that um, the, the quartile four has the lowest saturated fat and the low, the high carbohydrate score has the highest saturated fat. Apart from that, we can see that other bias kind of staggers the way we'd expect. So less physical activity with lower carb, carb score, higher alcohol consumption, higher smoking and so forth. And these things are meant to be adjusted for, but Hang on a minute, we'll see if they are. So, quartile 4 of low carbohydrate diet score had the highest risk of overall cardiovascular disease, cerebrovascular disease, cancer mortality, overall mortality, etc, etc, etc. It looks really, really bad, doesn't it? Well, let's have a look at that table again. You'll see that even though there wasn't a dose response with carbohydrate, there's a strong dose response with alcohol consumption. We have 3.2 grams per day in the low, in the, in the you know, low, low carb score quartile, and we have 16.2 grams per day in the high um, low carb diet score quartile. So this, this is a huge dose response. This is the most significant thing in the study. And um, we can see here from Ian Haynes' other data that alcoholic beverages account for 4.8% of calories. Now, they weren't included as a, um, as a percentage of the diet in the low-carb diet score. And is this honestly reporting? This is just reported data. Well, disappearance data puts per capita consumption in America at 23.9 grams a day, which is a decent amount of alcohol. It's a, you know, two, two standard drinks of wine, two shots of spirits or so forth, which is, you know, reasonable. People do drink a lot of alcohol. Look around you. So, um, but, so, do we know anything about how they report it? Yes, we do. We know that under-reporting is reality, and um, here's a good paper by Boniface and Shelton from, from England that looks at alcohol consumption, and all they did is give people basically a second interview, kind of a second chance to put it right. So they found the distribution of um, underreporting of alcohol is staggered depending on the amount. So the heaviest drinkers underreport by 60% in their study, and you know the lightest drinkers underreport less. So if we look at this across the um, the European Heart Journal study, which is based on Ian Haynes' data, then we see that you know the people who reported drinking the most alcohol are actually going to be drinking a lot more than they said they were. And um, they also found, this is from Ian Haynes, that carbohydrate intake was the first to decrease with increasing alcohol consumption. So as people drink more, they eat a bit less of other food, and carbohydrate is the thing that is goes down the most. Here we have another Enhanced study where they just looked at binge drinkers on drinking days. On drinking days, these people actually ate more, but they only ate more protein and fat. They did not eat more carbohydrate. There's a 10% increase in protein intake on drinking days, and this makes sense if you look at the snacks in a bottle store. You're going to find that there, um, you're going to find beer sticks, you're going to find peanuts, you're going to find chocolate, you're going to find much less in the way of biscuits and crackers and so on. You know, put together everything in a bottle store tote up the macros and you've basically got a low carb macro ratio. And um, now the other studies in the, I looked up the other studies in the meta-analysis that was in the in Haynes analysis and most of them had implausibly low alcohol intake, so like just a few grams a day. Um, and only one of them reported alcohol and mortality and that was a Lagu study. Lagu et al found that people who drank more than 25 grams of alcohol a day had two and a half times increased risk of mortality. That's a massive difference, much bigger than the so-called low carbohydrate diet score association. Now, if we look at an earlier paper on low carbohydrate diet score and mortality, one that got a lot of publicity, the Seidelman et al. one in The Lancet, we find this is from the ARIC study. And the ARIC study actually measured alcohol 
intake. But cider and all do not mention alcohol at all in their analysis. It just doesn't come up. And not as a percentage of energy, not as a, you know, not, it's, it's not mentioned as a confounder. And this is, um, this is pretty bizarre, but this is the one that made the biggest splash. This is going to shorten your life. Eating this low carbohydrate diet score, even if it's really high in carbohydrate, is in fact going to shorten your life. But what else does Seidelman know? Because people don't put everything they know into a paper necessarily. Well, here's a paper that Sarah Seidelman authored in the, around about the same time, genetic variants in SGLT1. This genetic variant decreases your absorption of glucose. So you're getting a de facto um, low carb diet because less of the glucose is being absorbed. Well, is that bad for you? And you know, this is, genes are measured accurately. Is that bad for you? Well, here we have a reduction in um, obesity, diabetes, heart failure, and in death. So 0.66, that's a 34% reduction in death from a low carb diet in um, if it's if, if you arrive at it genetically. So why were anyway going back to the original study, why were the polls analyzing American N. Haynes data? Maybe because of this guy, Jan Kwasniewski, who has come across a thing called the optimal diet. It's a bit pseudoscientific, but it does arrive at a low carb diet. And I think they hate this. He's been doing it since the 70s and they want to stop him. So are low carb diets associated with mortality? Well, the low carbohydrate diet score, which is um, probably the least reliable way of looking at the question, is associated with mortality, but it is strongly associated and strong dose response association with alcohol consumption. Alcohol is associated with mortality partly because of its own toxic effects and partly because it's associated with other things, you know, secondhand smoke, um, all sorts of risk-taking behavior and occupational categories that are associated with mortality. Low-carbohydrate diets are associated with biomarker profiles that predict longevity. See Dave Feldman's presentation on biomarkers in the NHANES data. Now, biomarkers are measured accurately, especially compared with diet or alcohol, if I go to the doctor, they'll predict my risk from, you know, my, my blood tests. They won't do it from by asking me what I ate. My doctor's not an idiot. 